Well, how do that, chums? So today, chums, I'm going to be talking about GTA 6, well, the makers of, pretty much, and what they're proposing, which is a play-per-hour sort of setup, people. Got myself a lovely hot chocolate to go over this. But I'm just thinking, what's to stop other games companies doing the same thing? Now, inside of No Man's Sky, people, I've got at least 1,000 hours on one save. That's just one save. A thousand hours. If that was pay per hour, God, I could be bankrupt. Yes. Now, something I would say, people, is if I'm ever in a taxi ride, I'm not really enjoying my ride. I'm too busy checking the monitor, checking the meter every now and again. Now, if video games came with a meter on them, am I going to be enjoying that game as much? Or am I going to think, hold on, if I go over to another hour, I'm going to have to pay an extra quid or something, you know? Am I going to be constantly watching the time as I'm playing a game? Hmm. Anyway, we're going to get into it. That's what today's show is all about, people inside the viewerverse. So, yeah, let's jump on over onto the old Twitter space, where I raise this actual question, people inside the viewerverse. Just pause that in the background. I'm not a big fan of GTA, to be honest. Yeah, but I'm, my worry is it's going to come to more games, okay? So anyway, let's jump on over to the Twitter space and I'll show you what I mean. Boom! There I am on the old screen. It's a GT6, pay per hour. Imagine that for No Man's Sky. Like I said, I've had over 1,000 hours. Hours. Metro says, not a bad idea. Holy fudge, this could kill gaming. Or I feel it could. What do you all think? And there's a link to the article here. You can hit it up and you can read the article. Now, something that it doesn't say inside of this article is exactly how they're actually proposing this sort of idea. Because there's multiple ways they could put this idea into game or into fruition. I mean, one way that they could do it is they could say, right, well, we've put in 100 hours of story into this game. Therefore, this game should be £100. You know, if your game has only got 40 hours of game play story in there, like No Man's Sky, on average, 40, 40 hours of game story narrative, then it should be £40. Maybe that's what they're proposing, but it doesn't go into detail inside of this article that I've read. It almost reads like you're going to get paid per hour that you play it. Now, we have had games in the past like EVE Online and World of Warcraft that had sort of like a pay monthly sort of setup. It's not even season pass. Pay per hour is how they actually worded it. Anyway, 17 people have chimed in on this, so I thought, you know what? There's that many comments here. There's that much discussion. There's that much debate. I can make a video. So this is that video, people. That's what you're watching right now. So Beeble has come in. Beeble Bum, he's a, he's a content creator for No Man's Sky, fellow content creator. I guess. Met him in real life as well. He's a lovely guy. Create controversy. Have social media blow up. Then retract the statement, bad publicity is publicity. Yeah, so the guy that actually said this, one of the CEOs over at um, Rockstar, has actually sort of recanted on this to say it was an idea. It's not going to happen. It's an idea. Yeah. So I replied, put true that, people. It did get people talking. Heck yes. It's got a lot of people talking, including us. Just that it was being contemplated means that it could be a future model. That's my concern. The idea is out there on the table now. It's been tabled, people. Now, I was thinking, if we ever get to the state of Get Ready Player One, where you go in some sort of virtual experience, where it's more of an experience rather than a game, then perhaps, perhaps, you know, that's more of a time-orientated model where you pay for your time in the VR experience. And maybe that's more of a thing. But when it comes to games, I honestly don't think this should be anywhere near the table. People came back with, yep, you know, it was just a joke when someone says something offensive. Yeah. It, it kind of feels that way, mate, doesn't it? People are just testing the waters. Exactly. Dipping a toe in. Seeing what works and who they're dealing with. Yeah. And if we ever get to the point where games are pay per hour, then people will play it. They're always, yeah, there always will be people that will play it. You're quite right. You're quite right. But would I play it? I don't know whether I would. It's like EVE Online. My friend, when I went round his house, he showed me EVE Online. I was like, oh my God, I've got to get this. I've got to play it. I was contemplating building a PC and jumping in on it hard, you know? This was way before a lot of the other games that come out that are space orientated. But I was blown away. And then he said, well, you have to pay monthly. And I was like, oh, I'm not liking that idea. I like to pay once and that's it, you know? 
But he was like, yeah, but if you play the game enough, you earn a load of in-game currency, and then you can use that in-game currency to pay for your next month. But then it almost feels like you're almost being forced to play. I just don't think that's a healthy model. It feels quite addictive. Anyway, Jason Plains chimed in and said, I don't think it would ever be pay per hour, but I can see, see Rockstar using it as an excuse to make games $100 or more as standard. So this is where I was coming from earlier, where I said, maybe if they said we've got a 100 hours story, therefore our game is going to be $100. Now, maybe that's where they're going to benchmark it, or maybe that's what they're going to do. One second. Hmm. It's a nice hot chocolate. Which then made me think, well, what other entertainment industry does this? I mean, making a phone call on your phone, that used to be pay per minute, didn't it? You know? But that would be like going to the cinema, and then the actual lady at the booth says, okay, which film would you like to watch? Oh yeah, I'd like to watch Avatar: Way of Water. Okay, well that 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 that, that movie is three hours, so you've got to pay double the price. Like, oh, what the? What are you on about? You know that that just wouldn't wash. I wouldn't go and watch a three-hour movie in the cinema if that was the case. If they had to pay, had to pay bloody double. You know, most movies are an hour and a half long. Well, in the last freaking year, that's not the case anymore. They seem to pad every movie out to make it three hours now. It seems to be a standard. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. It, it wouldn't wash with movies, even though it's probably got to have a bigger budget, more people on it to make a longer film. They've just got to soak it up, you know? It, it is what it is. I, I kind of... I, I, I really don't get it, to be honest, myself. Not on video games. Anyway, this article, article doesn't say how much or if there is a cap. You see, the worry then is you'd get some games companies that would just stick shed loads of padding in and padding and padding. It's like freaking Starfield. If you start playing the story in Starfield, everybody speaks like they've got some kind of speech impediment. There's loads, loads of padding. It's like you talk to them. It's like you hit up, a, I don't know, the cowboy guy, Sam. And here we go. We've just arrived. This is my hometown. My uncle doesn't like me. Yes, there are reasons. But please don't ask. It's like that throughout the whole game. And it's like, will you just speak fucking faster? You know, it's like they've been padded out on purpose. You get games companies doing that sort of shenanigans and then saying, well, ours is £100 as well. Did my head in. Could help people addicted to gaming or help with health issues, I suppose. But then I also put, could also make games markers think, how do we keep players coming back? But then that feed, feeds into addictive games. Double-edged sword. Yeah, I can see both of those things happening, you know? It, it's not a good model, it really isn't. And Jason came back with, oh, for sure. I feel it's coming from a place of greed rather than humanity. I love that line, Jason. That's, frick, that should, that's a freaking t-shirt right there, isn't it? Yeah, greed rather than humanity. It does seem to be a lot of the world right now is greed over humanity. You know what? I might do a lot of these cup of teas with Captain Steve episodes and get into some real weldy type stuff because I'm just sitting here being part of the silent majority and I, I, I don't want it. I've got things to say. Ah, anyway, <laughs> how do we charge more? I know just charge per hour and fluff up our game. Exactly. Exactly, well, I was just get yes, 100% agree. Just like cutting content, create DLC for later. I'm fairly sure Destiny did that at launch, you know. Not every company, but it has a few bad actors that ruin the group. 100%, 100%, Jason! I guess. Chaotic Serenity, oh, yeah, oh, Jason's a content creator. You, you must know Jason. Heck yeah, I mean, there's awesome content for No Man's Sky. I mean, look, his whole freaking icon is No Man's Sky. If you like No Man's Sky, you check out Jason! Anyway, Chaotic Serenity has chimed in. Chaotic Serenity does really nice vlogs. She's got a Siberian husky. It's a beautiful dog. She's also got a 4x4 and lives in an amazing area. Go check her out. She's really wholesome and lovely. Anyway, Chaotic Serenity says, It's like they are reinventing the subscription games. Like how EVE and WOW are monthly to play. 
100% Hercules. I feel like there should be a better way to go about this. Like Twitter's whole verified mess. Yeah, don't even get me started on Twitter's verified freaking mess. That's a pain in the neck, that. You know, I used to talk to people that have blue ticks. I've still got their blue ticks, and now I'm not allowed to talk to them unless I get verified as well. You took away my friend! <laughs> anyway, scrolling down. Uh, yeah, I put I never did play Eve, but I had a friend that was into it. I've already talked about him, so I probably won't go into it too much. Yeah, and, and yeah, we bounced back and forth, and I just mentioned about when my friend finally did pack in playing Eve. Though he did sell his ship and did sell his account, and he made enough to make get a new graphics card. But I know people who've played WoW as well, and they sell all their armor, sell all their weapons. You can even do it on eBay somehow. I don't know. I'm just never into freaking WoW. I only played it once when it was free for a month, and I could never get into it. I was standing on a hill collecting mushrooms while some other git was just standing there doing train impressions. I mean, what? What the actual flying fudge? I didn't have fun with that game. It, I needed more friends in it, I think. Anyway, the Scottish Rod has chimed in. Let's put Strass Zelnik. I have no idea. The Take Two guy has rolled that back. Oh, okay, coolio. And come out with some corporate speak. Publishers should try to over deliver on the content experience relative to the consumer and their spend. I don't think that went down well. Love out loud. No. Yeah, so in this case, if he has said that, you know, publishers should try to over deliver, it's like Elden Ring. Elden Ring had so much content in it. And not only that, you know, you would be trying the same part of that game time and time again. Or you would go away, grind it out, and then come back with better gear and do it again. There was a lot of longevity in that game. But was it actual story or was it grind for grind's sake to get good at game? There was a lot of that. I mean, how do you actually benchmark it? How can you say, well, this is story and that's what we're charging for to this is grind that you have to do to get past certain aspects? It could turn very dangerous. It could become quite a bit of a minefield in what games companies could charge for a game based on what they feel is game. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, a, it's a method for them to print freaking cash, in my opinion. Anyway... I've came back and but good, laugh out loud. I was trying to think of comparatives like phone calls. Yeah, we've already gone over this, or maybe even a taxi and all that sort of stuff. But then I came up with mobile games, kind of do this, using gems and other time gates, and it's not freaking good. They could do that sort of stuff, couldn't they? They can make it so you buy five hours of time inside of the game. And then once that five hours is up, it comes up with some sort of warning. You're approaching your five hundred your five hours. Do you want to top this up? It's going to cost you five English pounds for another five hours. Yeah, I'd drop that game like a ton of bricks. That, that'd be like, you know, the old TVs that you had to put a freaking pound in the top of it to watch it for uh, like five hours or something. It, it's a step backwards, in my opinion. And then Scottish Rod say, I see them carrying on with the shark cards. They make about 18 million a year from them alone, over six billion in total so far. The paying per hour feels like fake narrative to justify the insure people that see shark cards as a logical solution. So yeah, they're creating another problem and saying, well, would you rather this? No. Well, we've got shark cards. Yeah. Stop complaining about our shark cards. Now, I used to play Red Dead Redemption. And on Red Dead Redemption 2 online, you've got these professions. And the professions were locked by an in-game currency that you could buy with real currency. Or you could play in-game for like six months to actually get enough to unlock one of those professions. Well, I opted for real cash because I just didn't have the six months to plough into the game. And by then they probably wouldn't be relevant and I would have seen all the content online and ruined it for myself. So I opted. I jumped on in. There's ways and means that they can get cash out of people's pockets without not making it play per hour and still making it feel like you got value for money. And I hope that they do stick to that. And maybe this was just an idle threat. But because they've now tabled it as an idea for a model, some other company is going to say, you know what? That model could work for us. Heck yes. Some sort of, you know, real life experience in game. Why the fudge not? You know, anyway, human came in and said, Oh, by the way, Scottish Rod also does content. He's an awesome No Man's Sky content creator. Go check out Scottish of the Rods. He does awesome bases. So does Beeble. They're both awesome base builders. Both of them highly jealous of their skills. Anyway, Human came in and said, No, what they would do is make a single player $70 and then make you pay a monthly subscription for online. 
probably make it a tier system with better incentives the more you pay. And I said, surely season passes do that. Just feels like a tag on meter to the season pass model. Yeah, imagine that. You've got a season pass, plus also then being paid per doing pay per hour. That's freaking wrong. Ray Reynolds chimed in. If you're not following Ray Reynolds on freaking Twitter, you should be. He does awesome stuff. And the amount of times he gets retweeted by Sean of the Murrays or Hello Games is unfathomable. Yeah, it's almost like he, he's friends with them or something. Hit on up Ray Reynolds, give him a follow because he's awesome. He's very creative, very awesome guy. This is exactly right. Their 10-year plans for revenue were scuppered by anti-gambling laws in regards to loot boxes, so season passes and add-ons become the norm. This is just the next step for the bean counters to get more from gamers. This is it. They're just reaching around to our back pockets, mate. Freaking giving us a reach around. Yeah, you get your hand out of my pocket, you nasty, nasty game peoples. Yes. I mean, a lot of games developers, like Hello Games, are freaking lovely. You know, they've given us update after update, and it's been for free so far, people. You know, great, great model that. More developers should be going that way, I think, people. And trying to get it out onto more platforms, or to try and bring in more players through DLC and good word of mouth and a decent community. Honestly, think that's the best model, to be honest. Anyway, I'll have a sip of my um, hot chocolate before we continue on with this. People are crazy. Whoever agrees to this should pay for my gaming hours. <laughs> Not a bad idea, my ass. This dude must be playing on freebies. So out of touch, says Rain Drake. That's how I felt. When I first saw this, that was my actual response. I like, what the flying fudge? No. No, dang you, no. Roadkill Rabbit has chimed in. I love your icon there. That's really cool. It's like a little... It almost looks like he's got a Pikachu skin stuck over a robot head. Pretty cool. Anyway, it says, It's only a rumour at the moment, as far as I can tell. I looked into it yesterday, and there's no official word from Rockstar. If it's true, there will likely be a revolt from gamers boycotting the game. 100%. But even still, that it's a... It's now a tabled rumour. You know, this is... This is an idea that might not float their boat. It might not appear this year, next year, or any year, anytime soon. But it could be thought about by other games companies, is what I'm thinking. Oh god, that sounds like a nightmare. I know, right? Yes, Jacob Kyle. There is actually a PM, well, the Mayor of London or something, Sadiq Khan over here in the UK, that's thinking about implementing a pay per mile in driving in your car. Yeah. Freaking crazy idea as well, but it probably will happen. We're already paying shed loads on tax on petrol, and now we're going to be paying per mile. You're having a laugh, mate. That Twitter guy. Hello, that Twitter guy. I think gaming needs to be ET moment and die. I don't know what I don't know what ET means. Extraterrestrial moment? I don't know. We really need to get suits out of the industry and have it to be like the old days where it was a bunch of nerds trying to make the next big thing or companies who are passionate about the technology and entertainment side of things. You know what? I've got no problem with people putting out DLC like, you know, Cyberpunk did. That was freaking awesome. CD Projekt Red. Their model's okay. You paid for the base game. Oh, you want this amazing bit of DLC. Cough up a little bit of extra cash. Fine. And as long as they don't cut it at frickin' launch into pieces and sells it back as a jigsaw puzzle, fine. Okay, we've got Wobbly Bob's SA. I'll just create an army of modern pirates. I already do it to play any EA games, except those I brought on CD and DVDs like Crisis. I don't know how you would even go about doing that, but if it's working for you, mate, well done you. Okay, we've got, we've got Flood, Flood Traveller. Flood Traveller, I don't have the words to describe. How this idea is so damn terrible. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, I guess. Creative Interloper. Is that the person that made that 3D printed helmet? Because that was freaking ace. The standard of release game should be full 100% release. No half-baked products with future paid DLC or content. Heck yes. Fully bug-free or refundable if you find one. At least 10 years of support. Mod capability. I don't know about the 10 years of support. You know, there's a very few games that last 10 years. I mean, there's a couple of exceptions to that rule, like, you know, Minecraft, perhaps even Fortnite now, perhaps No Man's Sky. But yeah, I don't know about that. Five years, perhaps. Yeah. But yeah, 
I agree with your sentiment. Joseph Masanensky. Considering GTA 5 is basically unplayable in anything but single player story mode, why are they even making a new one? You see, I don't really play GTA. I only play, I think I played GTA 4. I was a Russian guy doing Russian mobby type stuff. And it, it was all right for a bit, but I got bored. All right, here. I don't really like weird, real weldy games. I like fantasy and sci-fi. So, you know, Elden Ring, Dragon's Dogma, No Man's Sky, Starfield, space games, fantasy games. If they ever made a space fantasy games, dragons in space with space wizardy magic, like freaking Star Wars with Jedi skills and massive great big space fauna, sign me up, space wizards, heck yes. We've got a Kogul Jan. Hello there. I don't care about GTA 6. I stopped playing GTA 5 about halfway through as it became excessively vulgar. The previous entries were also borderline, but GTA 5 was too much. Yeah, um, the only thing I've liked about what I've seen on GTA 5 when I watch my mate Moose play in the mornings, I just liked all the physics, all the crash physics and how the crowds react and things like that. Pretty darn awesome, to be honest. Uh, I haven't seen many other games come on par with that when it comes to virtualization of a city. Pebbles Beach. I buy games on per hour ratio. I want bang for my buck. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. I'm not 100% sure what that even is. Well, there we are. Joe. Hello there, Joe. If that ever happens... Whichever company decides to buck that trend, I'll easily jump to the top of the console wars. I'll never support that garbage. No, I don't think I could get on board of it. The only thing time I think I could is if it was like a VR sort of experience sort of thing. And maybe if there was, you know, like Second Life, the game Second Life. I, would, I wouldn't even say that's a game. It's more of an experience. If it was something like Second Life, where you pay to be in there to do it, maybe if that money went into the game and there was ways to sell stuff in the game to actually make money back. So if it had its own currency in game, even if it was Bitcoin or something or in-game currency that you swap real currency for, but you can still make it back and maybe cash out at the end. I'd be up for that. You know, they'd have to get rid of all mods because imagine that. People could get minted just by cutting corners in the system. But yeah, if there was a virtual world, a virtual currency and virtual money that you're paying into and you make a virtual currency, that could be freaking awesome. There's ways and means that it could work, but I wouldn't support it in the likes of GTA 6. Or if it came to games that I love and enjoy now, if it came to um, No Man's Sky... As much as I love No Man's Sky, I'll be cutting my hours right down. I'll be very careful with what I did and how I went about doing it, for sure. And would I would I enjoy it as much? Probably not, because I like to just sit back and relax and just enjoy things. But if I was looking at my watch every five minutes to see whether I was approaching an hour to pay another freaking pound, no, um, that would kill gaming for me, people. It really would. Bluffy C. Vixen, this would definitely kill Rockstar. At this point, it's a good thing. Well, I'd love to see the next Red Dead game. I, I, I would like to see what they managed to do with their engine and how they put it out there. I've got a lot of respect for Rockstar. Um, they set benchmarks. Cool. And we've got Red Wolf here. His one was actually sh um, hidden because there's a couple of swear words there. But you can read it on the screen if you're adult enough. But there we go, people. That's pretty much the bottom of that. And I have to agree with a lot of the sentiment that's being echoed here. It's a very odd world to be sort of thrown at, isn't it, right now, people inside the viewerverse? Anyway, let me uh, jump back on over onto here. Might as well continue talking for a bit. Still got a little bit of hot chocolate left. But, you know, if there wasn't your sentiment echoed inside any of that commentary, feel free. Put a comment on this video. Hopefully, if it's a good enough, I'll probably reply. May even pin it. You freaking knows. Yeah, get a type in. You never know. I'm going to be drinking the rest of my hot chocolate. But I'm, I'm thinking about doing a few videos. You know, I quite like the odd weird conspiracy that's not overly conspiracy anymore. It's like aliens visiting Earth. There seems to be that whole Congress sort of disclosure going on now, isn't there? So... Maybe I can talk about my thoughts and feelings on aliens a little bit more openly. Maybe I can start talking a bit more about world events. Things that I feel are being, you know, conflated, inflated, put out there just to spin a story. I think I could have a bit of fun. 
or even a little bit with my cryptids. I might even bring to you things that I found on YouTube that I think are freaking awesome. Channels that haven't got a lot of love that need a lot more love. Or just channels that I really enjoy watching. I find now that I watch YouTube more than mainstream TV. And you know what? I don't, I don't know of a channel right now that is actually doing reviews of other channels or saying you've got to check this guy out. It's like we need a TV Times for YouTube, you know. Yeah, I, so I might start doing that. I might start branching out a bit, do a few Captain Talks videos where I talk about other channels and things that I find, little gems on the old YouTubes. Anyway, people, I hope you like that idea. If you do, let us know in the comments so I know which direction to take things in, especially since we could be having a bit of a quiet time when it comes to No Man's Sky over the Christmas period. Yeah, I just did a video just talking about do you think there'll be an update to No Man's Sky this year? I honestly am getting very nervous now. I don't know whether it's on the cards. So I'm going to put a video up there. Go hit that up and give that a watch and let us know what you think. Anyway, I'm going to be ending off now, people. So hopefully that's everything covered. And yeah, if, if I haven't covered what you're thinking, let us know in the video description. Well, in the video comments. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.